Hey guys, Nathan here back again with another video and in today's video I'm back talking about football and I'm going to be taking things back a little bit to one of my my first sort of videos where I'm going to be discussing and criticising Manchester City's defensive options. And now a lot of you might be thinking, Nathan, how can you criticise players from a treble winning team? And yes, I'd agree, it is quite an unpopular opinion, but this isn't a reactionary opinion that I've developed over the last three or four games or we've had poor performances, especially defensively. This is an opinion I've had for many years now and I've been quite vocal about to, to people I know in real life and, and a little bit on Twitter. But before I get into that and go any further, don't forget to like the video, comment down below what you want to see next and don't forget to check out the rest of the videos on the channel and also don't forget to hit the subscribe button that's the most important part, it does really help the channel grow and I'm also trying to hit 100 subscribers by the end of the year which is coming up in a few weeks now so your support would be very much appreciated. But anyway, without any further ado, let's get into the topic of today's video, Manchester City's defence, more importantly, England and Manchester City's player, Carl Walker. <laughs> to start by saying that Carl Walker is an exceptional athlete. His physical attributes are very impressive, especially as he reaches the latter stages of his career, well, at the top level at least. With all that being said, being a great athlete doesn't automatically make you a good footballer. Like Prime examples of this are people like Adama Traore or Dan James. These players both possess an abundance of pace with Adama also being extremely strong on and off the ball. But even with these two players' um, impressive physical attributes, they aren't actually regarded as top-tier players because of their lack of uh, decision-making and other skills such as finishing or dribbling, for example. They're just known as pace merchants, and that's why the term pace merchants exist because there are people that are really fast and can start quick counter-attacks, can get away from their defenders quickly. But when it comes to decision-making, dribbling, finishing, passing, example, they're... Um, you know, they're not quite up to par with, with their, their pace or their strength. So that's why things like pace, terms like pace merchants really, really do exist. And this does bring me to the topic of today's video, Carl Walker. Because Walker has been an established Premier League right back for decades after his move to Spurs from Sheffield United in, in, in 2009, where he'd rack up 183 league appearances until his move to City. In, in 2017 and in his time at Spurs Walker would make a name for himself as one of the best fullbacks in the league with the only thing missing to solidify these claims being winning trophies and while in 2017 Walker would join the citizens and he for 45 million and he would go on to be part of the Centurions team the 100 points team and the formidables the domestic treble winning side in his first two seasons at the club and during this period of time, I didn't really have an issue with Walker. I thought he was a perfect replacement for Zabaleta. And the poor performances of Danilo at the time would also hold up Walker's efforts in these title wins in, in a very high regard. But that doesn't mean that my opinion can't change, of course. <laughs> this is where I find myself talking about Walker defensively because Walker wasn't perfect at the start of his City career with one of his most high profile mistakes coming in a shock 1-0 loss to Wigan in the FA Cup in, in 2018 in which he let the ball roll under his foot thinking that he'd you know and then turn around thinking that he's got the beating of Will Grigg in a foot race because of how quick Walker is but unfortunately it doesn't pan out that way Grigg gets to the ball first slots it around the keeper I think it was Bravo in goal it might have been Caballero, I, I'm not really too sure which one it is. I think it was Bravo though. Slots it round him and we can go on to get a shot 1-0 win in the cup. And that was the first time I noticed that Walker could be very complacent and lack concentration. And it, it that most definitely wasn't the last time that I, I saw this trait in his game. And as the years went on, Walker would become more complacent and his over-reliance on his pace would be highlighted even more. Walker is always also always praised for being able to, to pocket players like Mbappe or Vinicius Jr. by the English media and Twitter pundits. 
And none of the reasons these individuals give for Walker being able to shut up shop against these elite wingers involve his defensive ability, like his ability to uh, jockey very well, show um, show his winger out onto the outside, doesn't let them get close to the box, you know, his tackling, his interceptions. It's all down to his recovery pace, which, yes, is impressive. Very, very impressive. I'm not as fast as Kyle Walker. I wish I was as fast as Kyle Walker. But it's not a football inability. It's got nothing to do with his football inability. It's a physical attribute at the end of the day. And Walker often loses his man at the back post when it comes to crosses and, and he struggles to fend in situations that aren't counter-attacks where he actually has to use his football lane IQ and can't rely on his pace. He's not very good at defending crosses. He can be very, very lazy at tracking back because of how fast he is. Sometimes he just doesn't put the effort in because he's like, oh, I'll get there eventually. And he lacks concentration when marking people, for example, from a long ball or a cross or a set piece. His man will a lot of the time get away from him because he's just not focused. He's not switched on. And it's really frustrating to watch. And I think a big part of why Walker's performances have been so bad in, in the in the latter ends of, of his City career uh, at, to the point we are now is the fact that he doesn't have any competition in this role. His 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 place in this team is, is almost, almost like nailed on. And a lot of you might be like, oh, Nathan, what about Chancelo? What about Rico Lewis? What about John Stones? What about Danilo? Well, I already covered that Danilo wasn't great in his, his spell at City. He wasn't, he wasn't great at all. I really did not enjoy watching him play. And um, I'll start with Chancelo. Well, he was obviously leaps and bounds better than Walker going forward with him being one of the most creative players in our squad. Zhao was also not very good defensively and lacked a lot of the same concentration um, in defensive situations as Walker would, with the last straw being his pathetic attempt to stop Mo Salah running through and scoring at Anfield last season in a 1-0 loss to Liverpool. And Zhao also had an, a, a very poor attitude, as you know, that he's left City because he was phased out of the squad due to Rico Lewis coming through the ranks and, and, and putting in good performances when he was called upon by Pep. And that obviously brings me brings me on to, on to Lewis. Lewis is a, is a 19-year-old kid. He's he's still growing. He, he's still learning the game. And I don't think it's fair to, uh, to place him into the squad that young and have him bear unnecessary criticism when he's still developing and refining the skills that he's learning. And I think... The way Pep's um, manages progression right now is is probably perfect um, for for the development of his career. Anyway, um, and I also believe that Lewis is probably better in the Stones role, playing midfield, uh, compared to him playing as a fullback. And I also think that is Pep's plan with him in the next coming years to play him in that Stones role because yes, Stones is also really good defensively when he's played right back, doesn't put his foot wrong, and he's also good going forward. But I prefer to watch Lewis, and I prefer to watch Stones play in that holding midfield role next to Rodri, where they can do all the defensive stuff, they can do all the attacking stuff, but they can also come inside and go wide without leaving as much of a gap as coming inside as a fullback and then letting your winger run in behind you. But that's just my opinion, personally. <laughs> And I mentioned just a minute ago that Chancelo was better than Walker going forward. And this isn't just because Chancelo is an elite creator and he's, he's really good at picking passes. He's got exceptional passing ability, a wide range of passes in his locker. But it's also because Walker's a one-trick pony when going forward. He's very good at carrying the ball forward with pace, obviously, because he's, he's very fast. But he also slows the game down when he gets up the pitch by passing backwards because he can't cross the ball after taking a touch. And what I mean by this is any time the ball is, 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 is hit across field onto the right flank, if Walker can't instantly hit a cross as soon as that ball comes to him and he has to take a touch, then the cross won't come in and he'll pass backwards and recycle possession. And it's really frustrating to watch happen because if you, I'd know that if um, Bernardo, Phil or even Stones was out there, that ball comes in, that ball gets crossed into the box and a decent cross is, is coming in. So that's one, one annoying thing. And it is also a theme in Walker's game to get the ball on the edge of the box and set up to hit a nice low-driven P-roller long shot that's either going to hit a defender or go out of play, which is also, for, especially when we're losing. When he hits one of those when we're losing, it's, it's, it's reminiscent of 
I, I like I understand how Arsenal fans felt when they were drawing three three to Southampton last season and Partey just hit that long shot and it flew over. That is what it feels like when Walker does one of those because he knew it wasn't going in. I knew it wasn't going in. Keeper knew it wasn't going in. Like it was always going wide. Um, another th issue with him going forward is he's uh, often caught out of position um, quite a bit when he goes up up the pitch and obviously. You know, sometimes he can get back because he's quick, but sometimes the ball the the balls hit forward too fast, which means Kanji or Diaz have to drag themselves out of position to go out wide to shut the player down, meaning there's less people to mark in the box for a cross, which could easily lead to a goal. But his attacking ability doesn't really bother me because it's not detrimental to the team's performance, and it's also not his job. He's not. He's not. An attacking fullback. He's not Chancellor. He's not Trent. Where their job, even though they're a defender, is chance creation because of how good they are at creating chances. It's not Walker's job. I can't be too mad at him for his his poor attacking abilities because it's not his job. But his defensive abilities, obviously, that is his job. So this part of the video is you know it's just a bit bit nitpicky, but. It's also important to discuss his ability as a whole and not just his defensive ability. And this brings me on to my conclusion. And in conclusion, I really don't think we should sell Walker because he's a great personality and um, he's a really good leader to have in the dressing room. And I have a lot of respect for his leadership skills. But I do think he needs to be replaced in the starting eleven and phased out in the seasons to come. Because as of right now, I see him a lot like I saw Fabian Delph at the end of his City career. Exceptional leader, exceptional, exceptional leader. Really good at motivating the team. Really knows what needs to be said and when it needs to be said. Will always back his team on the pitch. You know, he'll, he'll go to war for his teammates, basically. But that doesn't mean that his performances on the pitch are actually good. At, at some point, obviously, you do become a bit of a passion merchant. Which, you know, is some, in some cases is fine. In some cases it is fine. It is, is, is completely appropriate. But in other times, it can be also detrimental to the team's success. Having someone on the, on the pitch that's just really there to, to roll the team up. So I, I think he's, he's very good to have in and around the dressing room, in and around the team as a leader. But I think his, his days as a starter for the team are, are numbered because he's just not switched on enough defensively and it does cause us a lot of issues. And I also think he needs to be taken out of these Trent and James debates, man, because Trent is a world-class creator. And when when Rhys James is fit, which obviously isn't very often, he's the most complete right-back in the league. Walker is only shoehorned into these debates, one, because he plays for a top team, he plays he's played for two top six teams and he's played for one of the best teams in Premier League history. But it's also because of his longevity and his trophy cabinet, which once again is not based on his football and ability, which is frustrating. And personally, I think we will never see a, walk, um, a right back like Walker again in a physical sense. I think his strength and his speed are, are generational. But in football in terms, I think both James and Trent will eclipse his career based on numbers and football and ability. Maybe they won't win as many trophies, obviously down to Pep's brilliance and how much he's he's won at City in this short period of time. But then again, Walker had zero top flight trophies at the age of 27 when he joined City and he's now on 15 and counting at the age of 33. So gives the other two plenty of time to catch up. Um, you know, I was going to say I wish them the best, but I don't because I want City to keep, in, uh, keep being successful. But that, that's all I really have for this video and I have on this topic. Please comment down below what you think. If you think, you know, this is complete rubbish and it's an unpopular opinion for a reason. Or if you think there is some truth to what I'm saying, but I might just be exaggerating a little bit. And also, like the video. Obviously, if you do enjoy, if you have enjoyed, um, subscribe to the channel. It really does help the channel out. Like I said, the goal is 100 subscribers by the end of the year, which is closing in quite fast. And also check out the rest of the videos on the channel. Obviously, I do a lot of FIFA content, but I also really do enjoy talking about football. It's my favourite thing to do. So I'm also going to be bringing back these more long-form video content where I do talk about football. But yeah, I've been Nathan, and I'll see you in the next video.
Hold on, shut down cases. They belly dots to the cards he faces. Chasing, chasing the bad guy, chasing. You don't wanna be the one like Ace and like GTA, trying to turn him out wasted. Aye, Aye. tell a bad bitch, come break it, break it. Body come mad, come shake it, shake it. Then get back to the basics, basics. Hold on, shut down cases.